Hello and welcome to my August wrap up. My name is Charlotte and we both know it's the middle of September so let's just move on. The first book I read this month was A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. Um, this is a sequel to The Short Way to a Long Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. So, so book two in the Wayfarers series and um, it was fun and heartwarming um, but also being deep and tragic. It's, it's, it's about people in space, it's about AIs adapting to human bodies, it's about what terrible people can do and what good people can, can do to combat it. It's two interweaving storylines that counterbalance each other well, although I really preferred one of them. Um, <laughs> and I made a full video talking about it, which I will link below if you want to hear more about it. The next book I read was an audiobook, which is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. This came out in 1997. Um, and I want to start by saying it's a misnomer. <laughs> he doesn't have two dads. Is this Hawaiian businessman talking about um, two different perspectives from two father figures in his life about personal finance and how one needs to take on the world to get rich. The poor dad is his actual dad who was like a professor um, and oh, I feel sorry for him because he's being very talked down to here um, but it's mostly about how he kind of has this mindset of you go through education so you can get a good job so you can be stable and earn money and really like believe in the system and then the rich dad is his friend's father who runs a business and is just really really scrappy and takes him and his friend on as sort of like apprentices to show them the ways of business. It's a controversial book because Kiyosaki is an arsehole like he backed Trump in 2016 um, and he has been involved in some fraud things his uh, some of his business practices are a bit sketchy um, and I think that's kind of the point like this book is about seeking capital like that is the the ultimate goal is making money and that is like at the expense of sort of anything as an entrepreneurial minded person there are some things I do like about capitalism but he takes it to such an extreme that there's no purpose in, or value in work. Um, it's all just about making money, which to me is just very sad. I do think it does have some sound financial advice in it actually, that's sort of been ticking over in my head since I listened to it. The most salient point being that the middle classes think that they're investing in assets, but are actually investing in liabilities and having a really, um, distinct separation between the two. For example, buying a house outside of your means with a big mortgage is the kind of thing that we sort of expect and is a, a good thing to do as a middle class person. Uh, but actually your payments on that mortgage, rather than increasing your capital, um, are more of a liability. I think broadly it's just good to know that there are different ways of doing personal finance and if you want to invest your time and energy into growing your capital with what you have like it's possible you don't have to go through the traditional carved out career paths in life just because you're afraid of your financial security so yeah disagree with a lot of it but like reading your enemy's playbook you do learn some tips the next thing I listened to on a long lonely car ride by myself was Gotta Get Through This by Louis Through. This is his autobiography that was released last year. If you don't know Louis Through, he is a British uh, documentary filmmaker and journalist and he is just a very charming, he is a very charming, awkward sort of chap and I never really been that much of a fan of Louis Through. Like I've, I watched a few of his documentaries but I really got into his podcast over lockdown Grounded with Louis Through, which is just an interview podcast with other famous people. But I really like his interviewing style. I find it really interesting to see how successful people that have been in the kind of semi-public eye for decades, um, how they got their start, like what their entry was into the world of TV or film or radio or whatever. Um, so it was interesting hearing Theroux's like early jobs and how that kind of got him in with a few of the right people and all of the sort of mistakes he's made along the way. And it was also very interesting hearing him talk about kind of crafting narratives. A lot of his documentaries are very provocative, um, but then there also has to be a sort of counterbalance of levity and sensitiveness, which I think he manages really well. The book also dives into Louis's relationship with Jimmy Savile, um, the children's entertainer come major, major sex offender. Louis did a documentary about Jimmy in the 90s and struck up this kind of sort of friendship, sort of strange working relationship of, of intrigue on both sides and hearing him talk 
firsthand about not following some of the potential leads that, that could have uh, brought all of that horrible stuff to light sooner. Um, seeing him kind of like grapple with his actions um, and hearing a first-hand account of what he did when they came to light was, um, yeah, very touching. I don't like when I say touching about a sex offender. All in all, quite amusing. And I really love Louis through his voice and he could just happily speak into my ears all hours of the day. The next thing I read was We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. Um, this is a, about a child mass murderer, um, but it's mostly about his mother and her relationship to Kevin and to the idea of motherhood. Um, we picked this as our book club book this month and this was the first book club because we were all going on a, a little holiday together where we invited our partners so it's a six person uh, book club and definitely a very interesting one for a book club because I think we had sort of different takes on what the thesis of the novel was. This was also made into a film in 2012 which I haven't seen and I don't think I want to see because I think I've had enough time with my brain in this headspace um, but if you think it's really good and think I should watch it, let me know. I've also made a longer video going into the themes of this book, which I will link down below as well. The next thing I read, I well, it was an audio book again, but I do have a physical copy, which is The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. The sanding has restarted downstairs. I thought I was filming in a good little slot so that we wouldn't get any sound, but we're gonna push through. Um, the Moonstone, I absolutely loved this when I first read it. It's basically the first detective novel like it's known as being the first proper like mystery detective novel has loads of tropes um that you would know from like sherlock holmes and and poirot and whatever like there are footprints in the sand and a red herring and like a letter from beyond the dead and it's part of victorian romance and i surprised myself entirely by being really into that um but i thought maybe listening to it again I wouldn't love it as much because I think maybe I was just really caught up in it when I first read it, but no, it's bloody fantastic and you should all read it. I can't think of a category of readers who wouldn't enjoy this book a lot because it's just bloody great. The next book I read was Summer by Ali Smith. I have been hyping this up. I've been getting so excited about this for ages because it's the fourth in the season's quartet. Autumn, winter, spring, summer. This came out on, I think the 20th of August, they pushed back the publishing date by two months because of the pandemic. I remember at the start of the pandemic thinking, maybe even saying in a video, that I was really sad that summer wasn't gonna be about the summer that we're currently having, but it was. This is about this summer. It's about the summer. So it does very explicitly reference coronavirus and lockdown and, and everything. Um, I'd say maybe two thirds of the narrative happened not during this period of time, uh, but it is very, contemporary. Honestly though, I wasn't enamoured with it, um, possibly because I just super built it up in my head, uh, or because I'd kind of gotten used to all of the Ali Smith things and they'd just become a bit stale, like being so forthrightly lefty. Um, it's something that grated on me in a way that I didn't really expect it to. You just know that like there's going to be some weird old art connection that brings two people together. But one of the things that made this book um, a worse read for me is that most of the characters in here are characters that we met in autumn, winter and spring. Um, and if you don't have a very recent memory of who all these people are, you're going to be driving yourself nuts with how they all fit into the narrative. So I don't know what the solution is for that. Read this after you've read those three. But it did mean that therefore um, it was lacking uh, original narrative um, because it was sort of fitting these in. Like it didn't actually have that much original story in it. Still love the wordplay, still love the Englishness of it. Everyone was really well characterized, um, but it just didn't charm me in the way that the other ones did, which is very upsetting. I don't know whether that's because it was rushed out so quickly that they didn't have enough time um, to sort of review the whole arc of the story um, I would almost rather have written it now and published it. I know that's not how these ones have gone, but had a bit more time um, because I could, I could sense that some of the coronavirus things, it was like, it was trying to not say things that would be invalidated in a month or two's time based on like whatever happens next. Um, so 
yeah, tricky. I'm disappointed in it, but I'm not angry at it. I guess that's where I'll leave it. The final book I read this month, another audiobook, was The Biggest Bluff by Maria Konnikova. Maria has a PhD in psychology and is also a writer. And after a sort of turbulent period in her personal life, she decides to start this book project where she goes from not knowing anything about poker to becoming like a professional world-class poker player. She's being trained by some of the best poker players in the world and it's so interesting to hear about the world of poker. Like it's just like a very glamorous life and um, the money and the travel, the highs of the success and the lows of the failure. But fundamentally she's trying to bring her psychology background into poker. Um, poker obviously skill and chance. That's why so many people in poker love it because you can be better at it, but there's also so many different psychological things that go into people's decisions. So to play the perfect game, you have to notice everything, um, keep track of everything in your mind. Um, but then you also have to think about how you are reacting to other players and how other players are expecting you to react to them. So there's also this whole element of like, she is a woman at the table and what? how does that change how people expect her to play and then how does that influence how she needs to play to hedge off those kind of arts so much. I know nothing about poker so I found it really interesting to just understand more of what goes into the game. Um, the thing that did annoy me is that there was a lot of sort of like poker mirrors life like will I be able to take control of my own life if I have control of poker? But I did like the sort of autobiographical relating it to her own experience sometimes, especially at the start when you didn't really care about her as a person, it was a bit much. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed it. It's been a couple of weeks since I listened to it and still every couple of days, I'll just have a little think about something from that book and be like, yeah. It's definitely the kind of thing I'm going to listen to again because it does provide that like scientific insights into psychology while also in this exciting high stakes unknown scenario, um, which was great. It sounds like they're doing more than just sanding downstairs now, they're rebuilding the shop below me. I thought I was filming in a nice pocket of time where there wasn't going to be audio issues, but I'm sorry. Um, so that has been my August. Um, I was on holiday and then I was busy working and it's been, it's been busy. I've, as I'm filming, it's 10 days into September and I haven't finished a book yet this month. I think I'm gonna come back at it. I feel like even making notes this video and filming has made me excited about books again because books are so good. Whew. Okay, let me know if you've read any of the books I've mentioned or if I've made you want to read them. I will catch you in the comments and see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching.